Hi everybody, welcome to my fourth torsional bar video. In this video I'm going to be solving this problem here of this excavator that's drilling for some posts or something, and the shaft of the thing that's drilling has a cross section like this, and we're going to solve the shear stress on the inside and the shear stress on the outside, and we're going to find how much it's twisting per length of the bit or of the drill shaft. If you want to know something else about our torsional bars, feel free to check out any of my other torsional bar videos. So let's go ahead into this. The shear stress, as you know, is defined by this equation here. So in order to solve for T1 and T2, we just need to solve this equation for part 1 variables and part 2 variables, all right? Or diameter 1 variables, diameter 2 variables. Okay. So to find the shear stress 1 then, you need to find the internal torque in section 1 times the radius of 1 over the j of 1. Okay, so let's go and find those variables. So we're told that the applied torque is 200 mega newton times meters. Alright, that's a pretty big amount. Alright, ah, whatever. So it's basically saying that at this point it's applying that much torque. So to figure out what the internal torque is, you can just take this little piece here and do a you know, a quick free body diagram. All right, we can take a look. Nothing too crazy. I'm just going to do a real quick sketch. So we know that the applied torque here is 200. All right. Two hundred. And then we're going to have a reactionary torque. And that's going to be 200 as well. All right. You don't really need to think about this too much. If we're applying this much, the internal force is going to feel that much as well. Okay, so we can write T naught is equal to T internal. All right, because from this free body diagram here, this could be T naught, this could be T internal, and you can see they equal each other. Okay, now we're just going to call it T. So, chugging right ahead here, and we know what T is. All right, it's just going to be 200 mega newton times meters radius. All right, now we're given that diameter, it's 20 centimeters. So the radius is 10 centimeters, or we could say the radius of one is 0 0.10 meters. All right, now the polar moment of inertia. This is a little tricky because it's not a solid cross section. All right, but since moment of inertia is a sum of you know, a small amount of inertias, right? Because when we, when you go to find this, you're actually integrating. What we can do is we can take the moment of inertia of this outer piece minus off the inner piece, and that'll give us the moment of inertia of the piece that's left behind. And we can do this because when we found that it's a sum, so if we can add it, we can subtract it. All right, and that goes for all moments of inertia. If you have a hole in something, you just track, subtract out the moment of inertia of that. So we can say J is pi by 2 radius 2 squared, or 4. All right, that's the outer moment of inertia. If we didn't have the piece in the middle, this will be the, the j. And we're going to minus off the inner piece. OK, and we can simply rewrite this as all right, and then plugging in our radius values, so the radius for 2, alright, that's going to be half of 30, 15 centimeters, that's 0.15 meters, and then going ahead and plugging these two into here, we get this. Alright, so this is our J, and it looks like we have all the ingredients we need to solve for this equation. We have T, R, and J. Let's go ahead and solve for shear stress 1. Alright, so I'll put it in 10 to the 6th because we want to take it out of the mega newtons. 
and put it in just to our regular newtons and meters so that when we find our answer it's not some convoluted mega newtons per millimeter or anything like that. It's just newtons and meters only. All right, so those are internal shear stress for this surface here. So by the same principles we found this, we can find the other one. So we can write All right, now I wrote this all in terms of twos, but really J1 is equal to J2. So we could just call it J. And then of course the internal torque at any point along this is going to be the same as well, so that's just actually T. So going ahead and plugging in all our variables using R2, we get the following answer. So yeah, it's a 47 GPA. Now notice that there's nothing different between these two rather than just a other than just a radius. Alright, and we're basically timesing it by 1.5. So if you do 31 times 1.5, it's this. Alright, quick math check if you want to do it in your head, just take 30 times 1.5, that's 45, a little bit bigger. Okay, 47. Alright, so you can see this is linearly increasing, which makes sense because the radius is just to the power of one, so you increase your radius linearly the torque is going to increase linearly. So we can kind of get a visual representation of what this looks like if you graph all right, the shear stress versus the radius. So we have a point 0 0.1 and 0 0.15 meters this would be then. And we're told that it's 31 here and 47 here. All right, so we connect the dots this is the shear stress distribution as a function of radius. Okay, and if you really want, you could just extend this all the way back to zero here. Okay, now let's find the rate of twist per length. Okay, so we don't know the length of this thing. Well, that's okay, we can just call it something and then we'll be able to solve for it. So we know the discrete form of the twist equation is this. V is TL over GJ. Okay? So the rate of twist, let's just call that, or the rate of twist per length, so let's call that theta. And this is the twist, and this is the total length. So the total twist divided by the total length is going to be the rate of twist per length. So, V by L is equal to theta, which we just said was rate of twist per length, and that's equal to T over GJ. All right, we know T, and we know G, and we know J, so we can calculate this. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so we get 3.9 rads per meter. So two notes here. One, this is pretty big. It's quite unrealistic. If your drill bit was spinning almost four radians per meter, all right, you'd have a big problem. It's just like a you know, big thing of bread or you know elastic, but anyway, I just made this up. Another thing is the units, alright, so it's radians per meter, and that's because this 
angle here is measured in radians and length is in meters, so we get radians per meter. Alright, so that's pretty well it for this question. So a quick review. To find the, the shear stress, we use TR over J. We realize that the internal stress at any point is equal because we're just applying it. So anywhere we make this cut, it's going to be equal. And then we found the moment of inertia, realizing that it's a summative you know, measure. All right, We can just take the outer minus the inner and we'll get the value for this moment of inertia here. We went ahead, solved that, and then plugged it in for both tau 1, tau 2, solved them. We plotted them, all right, realizing it was linear. And that gave us a nice visual representation of the shear stress. And then we calculated the amount of twist per length by rearranging this equation here. All right, so that brings us to the end of our fourth torsional bar video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in my next torsional bar video.